Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. We now come to Unit 3 of the Physics Use Case, where we get into a little more detail about how to analyze uh, the actual events, introducing the concept of random variables, and the properties of random variables, which underlie the statistics used in this problem. As always, we're using clouds, running data analytics collaboratively, processing big data are 15 petabytes a year to solve problems in physics informatics. And we haven't been able, able to find that term on the web yet. So let's uh, first discuss uh, random variables in, in, in general and in particular as applied to physics. Um, this uh, list here represents the topics and random variables that are to some extent covered in this, in these, in this use case. This is not a course on statistics, but it is a, an example of using statistics to solve a particular use case, that of uh, analysis of physics data. So we, uh, we will, at the end of this, if you want, you can say you've learned the following things. You've learned what a random variable is. Or you, you will have been introduced to independently, identically distributed random variables, which are what you get in physics, because uh, when those particles collide, two protons collide, uh, each event is uh, independent, coming from sort of the quantum mechanical uh, under, underpinnings of that, uh, those collisions. Then we have uh, something pretty important, the law of la large numbers, that the error is proportional to the square root of the mean. And we have already something we've already introduced, counting experiments, which count numbers, number of times things happen. We have important distributions. First, the Gaussian or normal distribution, which you get when you add, when you look at the distribution of the average of large numbers of uh, independent random variables. You have important uh, consequences of either having too few observations or too few experiments. That's the statistical error side of things. We also have the systematic error or, bi or bias, which is in practice more important. Um, because we know what to do with statistics, we just run longer. If we've got the wrong answer, it's not so obvious what to do. Um, that's a systematic error. Uh, but we have to estimate both. Um, and to do systematic errors, we won't really discuss that in these lectures, because um, that you have to know a lot of physics to disentangle the systematics of a particular experimental apparatus. We will discuss how to generate random numbers and how you use seeds to start off a random a sequence of random numbers. We will discuss um, binomial distributions. We will discuss signals and backgrounds. I've already seen that in the last uh, uh, unit where we had a Higgs signal on a sloping background. We will uh, define a little better something we've introduced, uh, an example, namely the accept project method for generating random numbers uh, with an arbitrary distribution and an arbitrary number of dimensions. We will discuss the Monte Carlo method, which is essential for understanding apparatus in this particular example. We will have another important distribution related to the binomial distribution called the Poisson distribution. We will have the central limit theorem, which underlies the theory of a lot of this uh, material. And then we have a little diversion at the end of the unit four on frequency versus Bayesian interpretation of probabilities. And also Bayes' rule, which uh, is a very important rule for combining information. So all of these things are at some extent at least mentioned, if not uh, deeply covered in these lectures. So um, let's think about a random variable and the physics of the Large Hadron Collider. As we've said already, the area of probability in statistics is the analytics that underlies the analysis of physics data. And I first started doing this, I don't know, too long ago, 1970 or something. That's quite depressing. And uh, at the time we did it in those days, physics was probably one of the uh, largest examples of uh, the application of probability statistics, because the physics had uh, was already still was already big science doing big experiments, and so they tended to gather more complicated data than anybody else. Now it's not so obvious that's true. We get lots of data of all sorts of types automatically on the internet, and 
Maybe Twitter is more more, or um, Google search is uh, actually a better example today. But in those old days, lots of the important texts on statistics came from physicists who were using the basic theory done by typically mathematicians to analyze data. So as we already remarked that uh, the LHC of proton collides with another proton, or you know, it's, or actually a heavy nucleus uh, when they want to do uh, probe what happens in the plasma when uh, you really hit a nuclear uh, a nucleus with a very high velocity, uh, high momentum proton, and say so there is the, the sort of fundamental quantum mechanics of that of those interactions says that whatever happens is random, and the, the result of each collision is independent of the previous collision, and they run over an incredible set of um, possibilities, because those possibilities are, are labeled by hundreds of real numbers, which are the momenta and et cetera of, what, of the various outgoing particles. And then if we were able to calculate the theory of proton-proton collisions at high energy or affected any energy, uh, we would be able to calculate these probabilities. That's uh, um, quantum mechanics predicts the amplitudes and the square of the amplitudes of the probability, and um, you should be able to predict it. As I mentioned, actually you don't calculate the theory precisely. You make models which approximate the theory. You use those to interpret the results. And I, I think I mentioned historically, I used to work in this area of building models. It was called Particle physics for nomology, and uh, I worked with uh, distinguished people like um, Richard Feynman, who taught me how to do some of those modeling models. So we have these collisions, which are all random, and then we have results. Which uh, the results are actually called events. These are very complicated events because they record everything that happened in the collision, and they represent a random variable, which is a sort of vector because there's lots of results. And that vector, in some sense, has a different length on every collision, because you produce a different number and type of final state on every collision. Um, and of course, such events, which are isolated independent activities, are very important. Where you um, earthquakes, stock stock transaction, and bank transaction are also, of course, other types of important events. Then we have our famous uh, data information knowledge wisdom pipeline, which transfers this raw data into the Wisdom that the Higgs boson exists, starting with the data, which is the stuff that happens when those protons collide at the uh, LHC. Um, and at each stage of that analysis, you're actually taking events and converting them into new, uh, new types of events with uh, transformations, and those are new types of random variables related to the old random variables. At each stage, you, re you retain the independence between the different collisions. But there's, of course, huge correlations with the results within a collision. 